Alright, next, next time! I know who one of them is! Iron Man! There are two thoughts I have as to whose opponent is. Who is it? Uh. Oh, is it? Oh, I didn't think of him! Hello, Internet. I'm your only mate, and it's that time again. Time for another death battle. Now, this time we have Tony Stark, Iron Man himself, versus Lex Luthor, Superman's nemesis. I believe this is our fifth Marvel vs. DC death battle. Now, before I go into what I know or any of that stuff, a few things I want to say. First, click the link in the description of this video. Go watch the actual episode if you haven't already for whatever reason. Then come back to watch my reaction. Okay? Good. Second, uh, for those who subscribe to my channel and all that stuff, uh... I haven't uploaded anything for a while because uh, my channel's been on a warning since about the 1st of April. Because I tried to upload something, I got flagged, and yeah, my channel's just been on a warning. But it expires on the 1st of May. I've got a bunch of stuff recorded, ready to upload. I just want to wait until my channel's in a good standing before I actually upload anything. Uh, something that I put together uh, quite a while ago, a few other reactions to trailers, uh, one or two I might not upload in the end, but, ah, uh, whatever. And third, wait, what was the third one? Oh yeah, wait, no, no, that's pretty much it, <laughs> alright, so, what do I know about these characters? Well, I am quite familiar with Iron Man thanks to all three of the Iron Man movies, Avengers Assemble, and most recently, Avengers Age of Ultron. I won't go into detail of why for that movie, because I want to wait a while, maybe until it's like not in cinemas, or maybe when the DVD comes out. Actually, I might just wait until it's like been in cinemas for a while before I do like a review or anything like that. But one thing I will say just as like a bit of advice, uh don't bother waiting until the end of the credits. There's nothing there. I know. It's it's unheard of. A Marvel movie with no end credit scene. But yeah, this is one. But if you want to stay until the end of the credits yourself to make sure that's fine. Do whatever you want. It's up to you. And Lex Luthor, I don't know too much about him, but it's mostly because I'm more of a fan of Marvel than I am of DC. So, yeah, I just know he's Superman's nemesis. I found out, basically when this was announced, that uh, he has a suit of armor which he uses to fight Superman. And, boy, that's going to be a pretty badass suit of armor in order to do that. Uh, and of course he's bold and rich. That's pretty much what I know about him. Now, right away, who do I think is going to win this? Uh, I would, I'm gonna say I'll be rooting for Iron Man in this one. It's not just because I'm more a fan of Marvel than I am DC, but it's also because I prefer, like, the good guys to the villains. So, yeah. Also, I will say one last thing before I actually play this. Uh, at work, I've been talking to a few people about this death battle as to who they think will win. Uh, me and one of my colleagues in particular, we decided to make a little bet on this death battle. I hit my desk for some reason, don't know why. And the stakes are... The winner, wait, no, 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 the loser must buy the winner a pack of five custard donuts. 
So basically, if Iron Man wins, he buys me a pack of donuts. If Lex Luthor wins, I buy him a pack of donuts. But then later that day, another one of my colleagues uh, was talking about it, and she was like, yeah, I'll get in on this. And she took Iron Man's side as well. So, if Iron Man wins, he buys both of us each a pack of donuts. But if Lex Luthor wins, we each buy him a pack of donuts. So, yeah, that's also what's going on. Alright. Let's finally see this fight. But I'm still hoping I see them throw money at each other. Just for the hell of it. Why not have a money fight? <laughs> okay. And play. Oh, I knew it might be earlier. Gaming going down July 17th through 19th in Frisco, Twitch. Texas. Stop. Head to sgconvention.com okay. for more details. Stop giving me ads, YouTube. Okay. Technology. It improves our lives, lets you watch cool shows on the internet, and sometimes it can help you to rival gods. Oh, like yeah. Iron Man, the Armored Avenger. And Lex Luthor, arch nemesis of Superman. He's with an iron boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. Oh yes, it's 3D! There are the talented. There are the prodigies. Yep. And then, there's Anthony Edward Stark. Please Basically, all combined. Howard and Maria Stark ruled a $9 billion military tech empire. They could have anything they ever wanted, except a child. Then Howard met an alien who decided to build a baby Wait. for them. Fearing Wait, humanity what? would perish to more advanced alien races, this child was genetically engineered to lead the world to a new tech age. Is this seriously how Tony Stark was born? Arno Stark. Oh. We don't speak of him. When Howard and Maria were disappointed uh. with what they created, they adopted Tony instead. Yep, that's huh. the secret origin to Tony Stark. Didn't see that coming, did you? No, I did not. not Good on you, wizard lipstick. Child of prodigy, Tony's gifted intelligence and world-changing destiny were obvious at an early age. Yeah. He graduated Claims from to have beat Miss Fantastic in just twice. He owns Area 51. Damn. Just 19 years old. But since this is a superhero origin, it wasn't long before tragedy struck. Oh, yeah. And by struck, I mean a car crash, and by tragedy, I mean his parents. So all of a sudden, yep. Tony was an orphan. Mm. But on the bright side, it also made him the sole heir of Stark Industries. Nice. With yeah, the entire help. family fortune at his fingertips, Tony pursued a life of reckless indulgence and mechanical tinkering. Yep. War was his income, and he enjoyed every bit of it until the day his eyes were opened. Yeah, mm -hmm. open with a shrapnel-filled irony bomb. Yep, I remember that scene. Held captive by terrorists in Afghanistan, Tony learned the bomb left shrapnel in his heart, which would kill him in a week. Oh. The terrorists gave Tony an ultimatum. Construct weapons for them and receive treatment, or be left to die. But being Tony Stark, he chose door number three. Yep. He built a space-age pacemaker to save his own life, and then built a mech suit around it and murdered his way to freedom. This nice. This Stark one of life's most important lessons. Heroes aren't born. They're built. A lesson nice. which also made for a pretty sweet tagline. My turn. That line is pretty sweet when he does that. But Tony's heart was changed in more ways than one that day. Upon returning to America, he nullified all weapons development at Stark Industries and dedicated his life to saving the world mm. in his own way. Yeah, we're not talking like just donating to charity and being kind to your neighbor. No, Tony of course not. Tony became a one-man army of justice and began creating a new and improved armored suit that the public would eventually dub Iron Man. And then he made another one. Yep. And another one. And another. <laughs> Another, and then he made like a shitload more. The Iron Man suits are numerous. But oh yeah, they typically he has come a lot of them. Base set of tools. Generally composed of a gold titanium alloy, his standard suits have the strength to lift up to 100 tons, fly nice. at supersonic speeds, and come with an onboard intelligence system called Jarvis, which controls his weaponry. I would and love to have that at some at his beck and call. And for good measure, these babies come loaded head to toe with weaponry. I'm talking yeah, shoulder-mounted darts and 
anti-tank missiles, an EMP. Oh, I didn't make the reference. Stable. Laser beams. These repulsor blasts draw power directly from the reactor in Tony's chest or chest piece, depending on the time period, to fire high mass negatively charged muons as a concussive energy attack. Most commonly, mm -hmm. these are fired from the palms of his suit. But if the situation calls for a bit more firepower, he can blast an even larger beam directly from his chest. Yeah, he can. All of these features come standard in his most often used suit, Model 13, the modular armor. This armor specializes in adaptability, allowing Tony to swap out its individual pieces for one suited to the mission at hand. Oh, and it also has an extra casing known as Iron Man Armor Model 14. But you can just call it Hulkbuster. Yep. As the name implies, this upgrade was built to contend with one of the universe's strongest beings. With a combination of magnetic and hydraulic technology, in addition to the strength of the modular armor, the Hulkbuster can deliver far more powerful punches and hold its ground against the Incredible Hulk. Who is strong enough to lift a 150 billion ton mountain? Jesus! The most advanced armor yet comes in the form of his endosim armor. Part metal, part scary space alien parasite, Tony can summon it telepathically, use it to imprison his foes, and even Ooh. suck up electromagnetic fields. That's gonna be useful. It can take hits from Storm's lightning and shoot repulsor beams so powerful they can injure metahumans who are normally able to absorb energy. Oh, huh. Tony is a mere man who finds himself fighting with and against unimaginably powerful beings. He has proven time and time again that technology can compete with the world's greatest superheroes. Yep. He can survive blows from Thor's hammer, hold his own against Captain America, and move faster than an extremist enhanced superhuman's eye can track. Not to mention, Damn. his suit can actually learn and predict its opponent's next move and withstand the fury of several nuclear bombs. Do not underestimate the Golden Avenger. Hell that no. That being said, for all their power, the Iron Man suits are hardly flawless. They yeah. They've been known to malfunction in life-threatening ways and consume too much power too quickly, leaving Tony helpless. Tony mm. frequently pushes his suit and his body to their absolute limits and past them. And his reckless headfirst mentality is responsible for landing him in trouble just as much as it is for getting him out of it. This has led to him setting off a civil war between superheroes and pissing yep. off the all-powerful Phoenix Force into killing Charles Xavier. What? Really? Charles? But he's the Iron Man. And he once built a device capable of releasing 20,000 megatons of atomic energy. That's three times more than all of the Earth's known nuclear weapons combined. And then he just blasted yeah. it straight into the ground! All because he wanted to see what was at the Earth's core. It <laughs> didn't work out. But Tony's most diabolical nemesis isn't the Mandarin, or even Ultron. It's his lifelong battle with alcoholism. Oh, yeah. Did you say something? Tank missile! That's the reference I was hoping they would make. in all of fiction. He can destroy planets, withstand supernovas, and fly faster than light itself. Mm -hmm. What kind of person could possibly be the arch nemesis to someone like him? You'd have to be like a god made of magic kryptonite. <laughs> exactly what I was going to say. Just a mortal man with a passion for business, swindling, and green trench coats. Lex Luthor. Alexander right. Joseph Impressed Luther me, began Lex. his rise to the top from the very bottom. As a child, he lived in a rundown section of Metropolis called the Suicide Slum. Yes, it was that bad. Under abusive huh, parents, I would not want to live that. Your willpower that Lex moved on to a better life. Yeah, hmm. willpower and some good old-fashioned social Darwinism. His parents died in a car crash when their car's brakes failed, uh -huh. leaving Lex alone. Don't feel bad for a second. Wait, he used their life insurance money to get out of the ghetto and start his own company. Hmm. And he's the one who rigged their brakes. Although founded through it, some what? legally questionable means, the infamous LexCorp successfully Dude. spread its influence throughout virtually all of Metropolis. In time, Lex came to practically run the city itself. Taking ownership oh. of nearly every media outlet, Luther's positive public image went practically unopposed. Hmm. But everything changed when the man of tomorrow showed up. In Lex's eyes, Superman was a massive issue for mankind. If humans no longer had to solve problems themselves, they would surely become a weaker race, completely dependent upon this otherworldly savior. That's actually so reasonably Lex began understandable. Lex to remove him from the equation, 
and then promptly insert himself as the ruler of humanity. Lex is a cunning strategist and mechanical genius who prefers to place his opponents in unwinnable situations. However, if physical strength is required, he dons the mighty war suit. Must I remind you of my superiority? No, I think Wisdom Boomstick will do it for me. The powerful battle armor created by Superman's other arch nemesis, the alien god known as Darkseid. And it's been further enhanced by Luther's own designs. Forged hmm. in the fiery pits of Apocalypse, Lex's war suit is no ordinary piece of machinery. Despite its less than sleek appearance, it comes equipped with force fields, gauntlet blades, a giant kryptonite axe, and Ooh, energy damn. blasts powered by kryptonite generators. It can also fly and has enough strength and durability to go up against Superman himself. Despite how capable the war suit yep. is, you may feel it has an obvious weak spot. The giant hole where his head is. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Q chrome dome is actually protected by an invisible force field. He just oh. wants his opponents to know exactly who's beating the shit out of him. Huh. Sunshine. Lex's weaponry goes beyond an alien metal suit. In addition to his brilliant strategic mind, he has also surrounded the Earth with dozens of satellites bearing his name. Their purpose? A gigantic game of space laser hot potatoes. Oh. Damn. Being a genius multi-billionaire, it's no surprise that Lex's accomplishments match the expectations. He's equal Deathstroke in combat, stabbed Seriously? Supergirl, snapped Brainiac's neck, and defeated Power Girl in a single stroke. You can't blame him. I mean, I don't think anyone could handle more than a single stroke with Power Girl. However, Lex is not I'm, solely dependent uh, on his war suit. He sometimes subjects himself to a kryptonite steroid, which has made him much stronger than an ordinary human. Capable huh. of surviving wounds, nobody reasonably should. Yeah, hmm. like the time when a giant gorilla shot him in the chest with a sniper rifle, knocking him out of a helicopter off the edge of a cliff and landing headfirst in a canyon. He was up and banging his robot chick in like a day. Oh, yeah, he built a robot version of Lois Lane for, you know, sex and murder. What? Because Lex always wants what he cannot have. And his know-how with robotics goes past insane and into absurd. While confined to a prison cell, he built a talking, flying robot that reads Moby Dick at such a high frequency it carved out an escape route through the floor itself, including perfectly what? shaped stairs. But most what? diabolical of all, when no one was looking, Lex Luthor took 40 cakes. He took 40 cakes, Wiz! That's as many as four tens, and that's terrible. Strange thing is, that's actually, officially, canon. Faster. Uh, Luther's hatred of Superman and drive to win are stronger than any machine he oh, can create. God. Take, for example, the time Superman threw a satellite at LexCorp Tower, bringing the building down on top of poor old Lex. This left the guy with half his face ripped off, all four limbs blasted away, and he was impaled in five different places. Even like that, he still refused Superman's help. Wiz, huh. if that ever happens to me, do me a solid and kill yourself in front of me so my dream about living you is complete. <laughs> it can happen, but it's also that same cocky independence that serves as Lex's greatest downfall. When he merged with the Zone Child, wow. What? It's not what you think. He gained, and I quote, infinite power. And a secure spot on somebody's watch list. The only catch was he could not use this power to harm others. But ah. because all he wanted to do was kill Superman, he tried it anyway. So Superman <laughs> just straight up punched the god out of him. Well, that's hardly accurate. Come on, how else would you describe that? Fair enough. Yeah. And so, when the Earth is threatened, you can count on Lex Luthor to look his enemies in the eye and fight for his people. And then exploit the hell out of him afterward. You know what happens when you take on Lex Luthor? <laughs> The same thing that's gonna happen to Superman. Huh. All right, the combatants are set. Let's end this debate once and for all. But first, we don't want you to have horrible, earth-shattering regret by missing the best party in gaming. So we're gonna tell you about it. Okay, while well, let's pause here. I'm just going to talk about who I think might win this. Uh, I still want. Iron Man's a win, but after hearing everything about Lex, I'm thinking, like, he's definitely got more power and more durability than the Iron Man suits. But I'm hoping that somehow 
Jarvis will be able to find a good weak point in Lex's armor. But then, of course, like he's been through so much that he just refuses to die. So, uh, oh, God, ah. Uh. Okay, uh, also I'm not gonna lie, my original hope was that uh, I might well just blast like Super in the face and boom, instant win. But now I know that it has a uh, force seal around his head. So, yeah. Although hopefully Jarvis can disable that and he'd be able to pull off a win. But also, Jarvis can call, like, more suits to Iron Man and he has, like, tons of them. So, I'm hoping that with his amount of suits, Iron Man will be able to pull off a win. Please, Iron Man. I've got donuts riding on this. And, play. SGC, the greatest party in gaming, is back to rock the Southwest for its fifth year. Hosted by Screw Attack, SGC is an event that you don't want to miss out on. We're talking three days of non-stop gaming in our massive free play arcade and console game room. Tons of panels with all your favorite internet celebrities, including Peanut Butter Gamer, Rooster Teeth, Yay. Funhouse, Pro Jared, Kinda Funny, and even a Dragon Ball Z Funimation voice actors reunion, where you'll be nice. able to meet your favorite Dragon Ball voices like Goku, Vegeta, and War. Not to mention that we're hosting a death battle panel where we'll be showing an all new, highly requested episode live. And Ooh. that's just scratching the surface of what SGC has to offer. So don't forward to hearing what that death battle is going to be. Head over to sgconvention.com using the link in the description and pre order your ticket. I have ticket one prediction in my head of this. It's the one might be. Come on, Iron Man! Really, all seven Dragon Balls? What a joke. Hands off! What's that you got there? Oh yeah, it's mine. I'll send you the bill. Actually, sir. I should probably remind you, the contents of this warehouse belong to this pot. Pepper? I'll forward the estimated damages fee to her. Great. Be discreet about it. One of us has to be. <laughs> Remember my face, Stark. It'll be the last thing you ever see. Come on, Iron Man. Also, adding two million to your chances. Not now, Jarvis. What have we got here? I am having difficulty determining the suit's alloy. Alien, perhaps. <laughs> oh, the suit is invincible. How about this part? Yeah, that's... Oh. like a giant rusty trash can with legs. <laughs> no judging. I feel like I should know what that is. I estimate that will be a $583 million fee. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That one's on him. So true. <laughs> Activate the EMP. 
Really? He has a Batmobile? Wait, is that the It was. That one might actually make a dent in your wallet. What are you talking about? It's just a car. Seriously? What kind of car was that? Where do I get one of those? Wake up, sir. Oh, Bruce Wayne. Watch your left. I'll say you are. Oh. Here it comes. No problem, pal. Thanks for the suit. Come on, Hulk Buster. Just like in the film. Spoiler, I guess. Unless you've seen the trailer. Come on, I man. <laughs> that current damaged your battery. Power is at fifteen percent and dropping fast. I recommend a new plan of attack. I have a plan. Attack. attack. Yes. <laughs> Power at ten percent. Call that. Oh. <laughs> you are the oh. Jarvis. Reroute all power to the arm and leg hydraulics. I have seen true power. You are nothing more than another end to crush under my feet. about that? Good night, cue ball. What's going on? We're out of power. No! Oh. Figures, fool. You're just like all the rest. Building a suit to save the world. Trying to play God. Oh, please! There's only one man in the world fit to play such a role. Me. <gasps> I forgot about that too. I don't know, Lex. Being a god can't be too hard. I mean. I'm the most intelligent, capable person on the planet. I'm not playing God. All this time, I've been playing human. Come on, Iron Man, you can still win this. I like the screw pack billboard there. <laughs> He just ripped out his... Did you take... <gasps> yes, come on! In the air. Yes! 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 Lex possessed incredible pieces of technology, but only one was naturally prepared for anything. Although it's true that Lex could trade blows with Superman in his war suit, the only reason he ever lasted as long as he did is because many of its weapons are based on kryptonite. There it is! And battling Kryptonians, only okay against everybody else. Yes, mm. the war suit could take hits from Superman, making it more than a match for even the Hulkbuster's power. But even against the very enemy it was designed to kill, the war suit only lasts so long. Yep. Iron Man's greatest advantage was being able to adapt his strategy by remotely summoning and changing suits. The Endosim in particular could counter nearly anything Lex could throw at it. Plus, Iron Man has far more actual combat experience. Lex treated physical combat as a last resort beneath him, while Tony straight up enjoys it. 
Lex just wasn't suited for this battle. I love that the pun. The winner is Iron Man. Yes, thank you, Iron Man. Next time All right, I'm what is the next time? Battle. Be a good one. Somebody. Beast from X Men, right? Is it? Beast by nature. Uh, I don't think I know that guy. Then this is humanity. Yeah, it's Beast! Nope. Too short. Beast versus Goliath. Huh. I know I enjoyed it, and I'm clicking the like. But right now, click the images on your screen to check out One Minute Melee, Mega Man vs. Samus. That was an awesome One Minute Melee, by the way. That shit is crazy. It Plus, was. Maybe we'll feed our intern. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she just, she just has like a snack here and there. Oh, okay, what? Uh. Alright, well. Talking about this. Oh, I got a second one right in a row! And on top of that, I also won a bet. <laughs> oh, this feels so good. Oh, I'm so happy to see Iron Man win. <laughs> I, I was so scared when he ran out of power because I I seem to forget so much during the analysis. It's just it 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 that I can't talk. It's stupid. But yeah, I honestly thought he was doomed when he ran out of power and Lex fired that blast at him. But yeah, that. Metal, I'm just going to call the T-1002. <sighs> Showed up. And just blew me away. Well, it blew Lex away, really. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the next time, Beast versus Goliath. I think that's how you pronounce his name, I don't know. I know vaguely who Beast is. I have... I don't know who his opponent is, though. So, I'll be looking forward to that one, because I'll get to learn a little something. And maybe a little bit more about Beast. Uh, I don't think there's anything much left for me to say on that, apart from, uh, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, like, comment, and just subscribe if you want. And I'll see you later. Bye.